Yo, what is good everyone? So today I'm gonna show you how you can animate SVGs with GSAP. So let me just refresh the page really quick to show you what we're gonna be making for today. So boom, refreshes, and then we got a little fade in and notice how everything fades after each other. So again, you can get fancy with this. And then after the animation is actually done, it just goes randomized and just moves in and out randomly between the X and Y positioning. Again, you don't have to add that, but I just put that in anyways, and I'll refresh one more time. And then you can get fancy with this. So let's actually hop into my code editor. Let me show you how I made this. All right, so here I am on VS Code. So I already created a project folder. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create the files inside of it. So let's just do index.html. And let's do styles. Hold on, let me do styles.css. And let me exit this really quick. And then let's just do app js and index html let's go in here let's do shift one and then just press tab and then let's just link and let's just do styles.css and then body is pretty much the svg so i'll have all my github info down below but let's just do this really quick let's just do h1 let's just see hey and then let me open this with live server all right, so everything's good. So pretty much for this SVG right here, I just made this from scratch on Figma and it's literally just rectangles and rectangles inside of each other. And then I just export it as an SVG. So if you ever want like your own design, then you could do it like this. If it's something you're capable of doing, if it's something more complex, then obviously you can like purchase them or, you know, outsource that. But this one is fairly simple. So let me actually go ahead and let me bring over my SVG really quick. So I'm just gonna straight up drag this over into my project. And if you're not familiar with SVGs, it's pretty much in code. It looks literally like a bunch of code. So like images, you'll see the visual of an image, but for SVGs, you just see a bunch of things that probably won't make sense to you, right? So right now this makes no sense, but what we can do is we can command A and just comment this in. And again, all the project, files are in, in the description so you can just straight up go and get the github link and you'll get access to this so like if I go here and then I just paste this inside of the body now all this SVG code so I just edit it at the end and at the top and I can put a space just so you can see it now if I save this it'll just display it the size like this massive thing right here so let's just do this really quick with the styles and then we'll just Shrink this a little bit. Also, I want to put a class first. So right now, let me go back. So here's the body, the SVG. So this first section of code right here, I'm gonna add a class equals to SVG. And then I'll just save it there. And that way I can actually style it. So if I do, let me style the CSS SVG width of, let's just do like 400 pixels and then height, 500 pixels. Now we got nice and small. So now let's do a quick little reset. So just so you can see everything in the uh, center. And then again, if you wanted to, you know, add onto this website design or SVG, I'd say, you can put this into like a website or whatever. We'll just do this for now. So let's just play flex. I'll just justify the content to the center and align items center. And I'll have a height of 100 viewport height just so that it's actually in the middle. All right, cool. There we go. And then app.js. So technically, we cannot do anything because we have to actually go down here all the way at the bottom of the SVG. I'll pass the script SRC and then pass app.js so that the JavaScript can be read. And then also, let's go to Greensock. So just Google greensock.com or if you type GSAP on Google, it'll show up. And let me bring this, make it wider. So here's the uh, website. Depending on what you click on, just make sure you go to this docs right here. And that'll lead you over to this section right here. And then if you scroll down, make it a little bigger. This little thing, where is it at? Actually, my bad, it should be right here. Installation. And now we can scroll. And there's multiple ways to install GSAP into your project. For this way, we're just gonna utilize the CDN, which is literally just copy a link. So let me see, where's the thing? So right now this is like the little section you wanna check. 
and then you want to click on CDN and then if you were to use any of these like additional plugins then you'd have to check them and then it adds it like another line like you add but I actually use a thing that was scroll trigger in my other video but this one's fairly simple so all you need is just this line right here so I'll just straight up highlight it copy this and then let's just drag or shrink this and I'll just paste this above the script tag and I'll save so now if you want to test this let's go to let me show you real quick so we put a class remember on it the SVG so this is like it's kind of like JavaScript in the sense that uh, you target everything in terms of the syntax so basically if I were to go here and let's just do let's see just do this let's just type gsap dot dot from parentheses and then I'll do quotes and I'm gonna say the class that I'm gonna target so dot SVG which is the, the SVG we just put on. And then let's just put like, uh, let's just do Y of 40. And see how like it, it like changed. So that's literally, we just target the entire uh, SVG, essentially the card. So that's like, just to show you that GSAP is working. If you wanna change this to like 400, then you can see it's crazy like that. So from the docs, this is like the easy way to get started. There's way more complex ways to animate everything, but for instance, we're going to start with the timeline and then you can go through here and check out the additional features after. But if you go to timeline, it'll show you essentially the easiest way to get started. So for instance, you say var TL equals to GSAP timeline and then you pass in all of your information. So what we can actually do is, let me just shrink this. Let's just erase this first. And then I'm just going to say var TL equals to gsat.timeline parentheses and then curly braces and then in here we're gonna pass in a thing called defaults and then I'll press colon and let me make this easier so you can see this so I'll put this on like a separate line and I'll go to the defaults uh, section on GSEP docs so you can see more about it but uh, pretty much we'll put in our properties so curly braces again I'm gonna say duration 0.5 for this, I'm just gonna put ease. I have none for now. You can play around with the different eases, but uh, I'll just keep it like that. And then opacity, let's just put it to zero. All right, so that's pretty pretty much like the top line. So now if you wanted to see, if I go back here, let me go drag it over. You can type in like defaults and then you can see on the docs like what it actually means. And then pretty much you can see it's, it's most basically identical what I typed with additional you know properties, but let me go back to the timeline. So here, notice how they have like GSAP2, GSAP, or TL.2, TL.2, etc. So it's pretty much think of it like a literal timeline where if I go here, I can say TL. So this is the start of the timeline. And be, there's two and not from. Again, you can play around with it depending on your animation that you're trying to create. But let's just do from for now and then do parentheses and then let's start essentially animating every single little thing here so first all let's do the svg first so the quotes.svg and then we'll do exactly what i put earlier curly braces y and then i want it to basically go up y40 and now if i go in and pretty much let's just refresh the page nothing is technically happening so let's actually let me check my console just to make sure. So right off the bat is because I misspelled timelines. Should be with one I. Boom, there we go. So now there, everything is working properly. So now the next thing is we have to actually add properties or essentially classes or IDs in these individual SVG designs right here. So if I go back to index HTML, and if you're first time looking at this, like you're, you're like, well, I don't have no idea where, where, where in the world is this line right here. So usually it's in, I would say, stacking on top of for for some designs it just depends. But like, for, if I were to go here and just like comment this out, and I hit save, you'll see that it it removed this particular line right here. So I know exactly. Okay, so this one I can add. I'll just put ID equals to line dash one. And I'll save it. And then again, I'll rinse and repeat. So I go here, I'll comment this one out. I'll save it. And I can see the orange line went away. So here I'll just put ID equals to 
line dash two. And then I'll rinse and repeat. So I've done this already. So I know the sec next one is going to be ID equals two line dash three. And then this one's going to be the fourth line will just be ID equals two line dash four. So I'll save it here. And now if I were to come in this line right here, and I'd save now the essentially like the button section or this, the last rectangle. So I just put ID equals to BTN, save it. And then this last one is technically it's this one on here, but it's at the bottom. So let me just comment it out. And now you can see that one's removed. So here I just put, I just put like ID equals to screen. Again, it's all preference. You can name this whatever you want to, but now we pretty much have lines one through four, the button, the little screen, and then basically the whole SVG. So now all we need to do is create the additional animation effect. So here, normally you just do like dot from, cause in the docs it shows like each, each line individually, but since we're all within one, we can just do dot from parentheses. And then now we're gonna target the screen. So I put, I put, I think, did I put ID? Yeah, I put ID screen. So let's make sure we do ID, which is hashtag screen, and then comma, curly brace, Y, colon, I'll just do 100. And then outside the curly brace, do a comma, and then we'll do quotes, and then I'll do plus equals, oh my, plus equals 0 0.2, and I'll save it. And you can see how the screen, let me do it again, kind of fast, the screen pops up. And now if I were to just do this, I can put them on two separate lines and save it but it's hard to see because um, I need to add more lines here. Let me try this to see if it does it. Yeah, right now it's auto saving, so it's not really doing anything, but you get the point. And this this value right here, let me show you on the docs. Cause you're probably like, yo, I'm just making this up. No, I'm, I'm literally taking it straight from the docs. So for instance, relative time plus equals and then the value. And pretty much you can see here, it creates a gap. So I'll insert this. After the end of the timeline, if you just do plus equals, and then if you do minus equals, it'll overlap it. So if you wanted something to start before something, you can do a minus, but you won't be able to see until I do some more. So let's do the next line, we'll do dot from quotes, and let's do hashtag line one. So now we're talking that blue, the first line, comma, and then let's do, click off these really quick. Let's do the curly brace, y colon, 100 comma and then quotes now i'm going to do minus equals 0 0.2 now again these are just like values i put you can always change them up and refactor it and i'm sure you can get the same effect doing a completely different method but let's just save this really quick and now you can see it does it like this so to save some time we can do shift all down arrow so we'll do line two line three line four and then btn so let's go to line one for the second one change the line two then we're going to change line three, line four, and then BTN. Now for these values, I mean, you get fancy with them. You could keep them like this and just save it. And it'd be pretty, uh, like it looks pretty much normal. But here I'm just messing around with it and did like 80, 60, 40. And this is just like the, the positioning and how fast and low it goes. And then here I just did like a little quicker. So like 1.1.1 1. 1. 1. and the last one, 0.2. And I can see it's like this. Now, if I were to change like, cause this is negative equals. So if I put this to one, watch the blue line. See how like it starts before everything. So then if I do plus equals one, now you can see it's like even slower. So the plus and minus, you can play around with that, but let's just do plus or minus equals 0 0.2. That one looks pretty cool to me. And that's pretty much the main effect. So if that's all you need, then you can go ahead and get fancy with this, make your own designs for your site or whatever you're gonna do. But for here, the other thing is a random effect. So like I do, let's do var timeline two. So TL2 equals to GSAP dot timeline, parentheses, curly brace, defaults, and let's just do duration. I'll keep it at one. And then I'll have a delay of three seconds because I want this entire animation right here to go first, and then I want the second timeline to show up after. So here I'll just do TL2.2, 
Burn the seas, and then I'm gonna actually target the entire SVG now. So like the class we put on in the earlier, so I'm gonna do dot SVG, comma, curly brace. And this is a cool thing on uh, at GSAP, instead of doing, cause if you want it to be randomized, which is really hard to do, if you were to have like fixed numbers. So here you can say X colon, then you can say random minus 50 minus, well my bad, minus, not minus 50 and then five. So basically what this value is, it'll move random between negative 50 through 50 and it'll round it to the nearest fifth number. So like if you go here, let me see if I can um, bring this on the actual docs so it'll be easier to actually see. Let me see if it shows up. So let's see. I remember I saw it earlier. I can't remember exactly what page it was on. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Yeah, so like right here. So here's essentially saying on this is what I did right here. And then pretty much it chooses a random number between negative 100 and 100. And then it basically rounds it to the closest five. So you can change this to whatever number this five to like two, three, etc. And that's literally I got this straight from the docs. So if you want to see more stuff on it, that's where you'd go to. And then technically, if I go comma, and I can do repeat, I'll do negative one, because that means if you do negative one, it repeats infinitely. And then what well, yo-yo is like, like a literal yo-yo. Have you ever seen yo-yos where it's like, they just go up and down and it's basically just repeating. And again, let me show you really quick, just cause uh, in case it's like your first time, you already know all this stuff, That's then you probably already know, but let's just do yo-yo here. Yo-yo, and we'll just go timeline here. And you can see here, basically goes back and forth alternating. So that's pretty much it. And then let's do this. The last thing I wanna do is repeat refresh. So that's capital R and I'm set it to true because when you do this random, if you don't add this line, at least when I was doing it, it doesn't actually make it random. So if I save it now, it should move side to side within the numbers I put. And each time it's gonna basically do a random section. So it's hard to see much because it's just left and right. But if we're to add like Y, random, minus 50, 50, five, comma. Oh, I got the parentheses too. Then I save it. Now it's basically gonna do the whole animation and then move up and down and then left and right. Now, if you wanna get crazy with it, you can do zero, 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 zero and this is like you truly see it's actually doing what you want it to do and be like yo look at this so it's just going crazy right now so that's literally hopefully there's something that you can implement in your design but that's pretty much the entire animation effect i want to show you today so if you did enjoy this video go down below hit that thumbs up button subscribe if you're new to the channel comment any other videos features cool animations to add to your website let me know in the comments below and i'll see you in the next one peace